Hello, DevOps people. Welcome to Full Stack Live, my live coding channel here on my own cast instance. And uh, thanks for joining me for today's stream. Today I'm going to do it. I'm going to build a Mastodon instance, my own personal and uh, probably open Mastodon um, instance. And since um, I've always been about uh, high performance and uh, scalability, we are going to build it in a scalable way. So no uh, single server instance. This is going to be heavy duty. Hello, everyone. Um, let me just uh, catch up with uh, chat here. Um, Ozoned, good day to you too. Thanks everyone for for following the stream. I really appreciate it. And uh, it helps building up our own little DevOps community here. Thanks for the uh, feedback as well, Ozoned. I am very happy to see that you are enjoying the stream. Um, and that's a, a pretty good question. Am I going to record this? Yes, I'm, I'm, I am recording this. And um, uh, I have a um, an account on Tilvids uh, where I'm going to uh, publish this. So, um, yeah, I guess uh, this will be um, watchable later as well. Hello, hello, everyone. Come in, make yourselves comfortable. I love having you around. And um, speaking of which, let's not make this a, a, a two-hour or so uh, monologue. If there is anything that you'd like to ask, if there is anything that um, uh, you'd like to share, things that you are working on at the moment, or if your boss is uh, annoying you or anything else, um, share it with us and let's make this an interactive show. Yeah, Tilvitz is, is uh, awesome and there are great people on there already. I'm not counting my, myself among them. I need to be much more prol prolific with uh, video creation to, to join this pantheon of uh, uh, YouTubers and uh, Tilviders. But we can always aspire to, uh, to come close. Okay, so... Um, what are we going to do? I've already prepared a few servers and um, we're going to build um, the beginning of a scalable Mastodon cluster. And by scalable, I mean that it really can grow with um, uh, its user base and with its traffic, which means we probably need to have um, uh, more than one machine because uh, we want to um, optimize each machine for its purpose. Um, I, for example, will always try and use bare metal for database servers because um, they give me um, the most performance and um, databases benefit from lots of RAM, for example. Uh, as soon as a disk gets involved, and even if it's a, um, uh, even if it's a, an SSD, uh, things will get slower by orders of magnitude. So um, a database that can read from its RAM caches will always be at optimum performance. And that's why I int uh, always um, used to use um, bare metal machines for databases. And um, we'll also need several machines for the different components of Mastodon um, in um, uh, Mastodon itself is basically consists of two components, which is the web interface, so a, a web application, and then there's the background jobs. And um, these background jobs uh, benefit from having lots of parallel processes. So I've got another bare metal machine for the um, for the uh, jobs machine. And I've got a simple cloud server for the web application. Um, at the moment, I have one of each. So we are not yet highly available, but um, uh, we can always add uh, the additional machines later. I just want to see things running first before I start, start um, scaling horizontally. But everything is already 
um, uh, designed to be uh, scalable. Wow, people, uh, you are really populating the chat and keep this going. That's awesome, but I'll have to uh, make my text a little bit smaller so, so I can follow. Um, so Ozone writes, um, very excited to see this. I failed num numerous times to get my own master running. Even with the instructions on the side, I was hitting version issues. Yep, yeah, um, I hope we won't, but we'll see what... Um, what the day brings and um they write uh, love the keyboards and panels behind you is that a pdp 11 type panel yes it is um yeah I, so i i love building uh, mechanical keyboards i was always a mechanical keyboard fan at the moment i'm uh uh typing on a new model f keyboard with uh, buckling spring switches i'll give you um uh quick peek on that however in the in this overhead uh, scene my microphone will be silenced so give me just a second and there are lots of additional m mechanical keyboards behind me and i tend to switch through them on a weekly basis or something like that and yes it is a pdp11 um, panel that's actually a, a working replica of a pdp11 uh, it usually runs uh, research unix version 7 but i've also done some work using um, rsx11 another operating system uh, that runs on the PDP-11 and that was built by Digital Equipment, the same company that uh, developed and uh, sold the PDP-11. And for everyone who is not familiar with that, uh, the PDP-11 was a so-called mini-computer um, during the 70s and early 80s. Um, and um, Unix was actually developed on a PDP-11 by Ken Thompson and Dennis Ritchie. Amatoxin writes, keeping I.O. scheduling RAM instead of SSD. Yeah, um, well, simply reading out of RAM will always be orders of magnitude faster than any disk, um, even if it's flash-based. So um, uh, we'll try and uh, have our database uh, run from as much uh, RAM as possible. I wasn't right. I have a Unicomp. That's amazing. IBM Model M type keyboard with buckling springs. Yep, the, it's basically the same technology. Uh, the Model M's are a little bit... Um, uh, but Model M's are basically the uh, successors of the Model F keyboards. The Model F keyboards came with um, IBM terminals. The, um, what was it called? 41... Uh, uh, 100 series of terminals and later the uh, 30, uh, 3270 um, series of terminals but they both use the same kind of uh, uh, switch um, design which is called buckling springs because there are actually springs in there that buckle when, when you press a key. Um... Also oh, right, I was born in 80, so you are exactly 10 years younger than me. So I never saw those kinds of old machines, but I love to look at them. Amazing and mind-blowing to look at. Yes, they are. Uh, they are this, I, I do love machines of that time, probably mostly because I saw them as a child. Um, maybe I was able, even able to, to touch them when I, for example, visited my parents at work or something like that. Um, but, uh, of course, I was never able to, to work on them, um, and uh, that was definitely part of why I later studied computer science and uh, today have my own web hosting company. So, speaking of web hosting, let's uh, get this uh, working, and thanks everyone for following and for sharing the stream. Um, I do appreciate it, and I'm very grateful. Let's get going, shall we? Um, are we already ready? Yes, I think we can go over here. So um, I guess what we'll need is um, the Mastodon documentation, Mastodon installation, and starting from source. Let's um, 
close these tabs that I used earlier to configure my desktop. Here we go. So, um, I'm going to follow the general um, uh, guide here first, and then later we'll go into uh, additional material to um, optimize things. Let's see. Hello, NH Omega. Good to have you again. James, thank you for boosting. NH Omega writes, I played on the terminal at my mum's work at times. Yep. Same here. I still remember visiting my, my mom at work and um, she was friends with uh, the IT uh, director and uh, he showed me their IBM System 36, I think was it, um, that ran all the um, businesses, uh, payroll and things like that. And that was really, really fascinating. Am I able to show the OS and specs of the machines? Uh, yes, of course. I'm, I'm going to do that as well. Hey, friend Leasley. Yes, your message did appear on my screen. Uh, if it did uh, earlier too, I apologize. Then uh, it might have scrolled by too quickly. Let me maybe try something here because, uh, yeah, um, so chat is pretty quick now. Um, and yes, NH Omega, that's a good guess. It's uh, a modern version of CDE. It's called NS CDE, so it's the not so common desktop environment. Um, it's a window manager based on FVWM. Um, and uh, uh, I love its its retro looks. I did work on on the original CDE during um, uh, studying computer science, where I lay, learned Ada, of all things, um, and uh, yeah, it's it's just a throwback to these times. James writes, I, actually, I'd rem, uh, recommend Pleroma instead of Mastodon since it's lighter for a server. Uh, uh, I don't doubt that, but um, I am. Um, pretty much into Ruby and on Rails, and uh, so I'm going to make this also a learning experience for myself, uh, running a highly scalable, um, or yeah, a highly scalable Ruby on Rails environment is something that I wanted to do um, forever, and now I have the opportunity to, and that's why I'm going to run Mastodon. I'm going to run um, it from my own Git repository though, so um, I'm keep uh, my options open to to do patches and things like that maybe i'll for example replace the publish button with a toot button again and i writes up to last year I was running fvwm since like 2004 or so but now switched to kde i've i've uh, over time i used so many different window managers uh, i still remember running um uh, open step and, and things like that um, they're all fascinating um, here on my work desktop machine I simply run GNOME because I need a boring environment basically um, but uh, for the stream I'm, I'm using NSCE so let me quickly do some housekeeping here I'll, I'll have to have the uh, chat on my main screen as well, otherwise I'll um, miss a lot of things. Uh, so let me quickly try and open my chat over here as well. And maybe even... Um, tiled. Okay, that seems to be working nice. So uh, then uh, I have to basically move this here. Let me see. Okay, that looks good. 
I'm pretty sure I, I used FVW in, in the past as well. Uh, especially when I ran... Um, well, uh, so my background is that I've been using Linux itself since 1993. Um, and of course, I try to run Linux on, a des on, on desktops as well, but uh, with mixed success, as you can imagine, back in the day... Uh, desktop environments or window managers just weren't there yet and applications were neither and that's why I mm, switched to um, MacBooks mostly in the early 2000s and I did enjoy having this consistent uh, work environment and uh, all these nicely designed applications but um, about two years ago I decided to um, switch and try Windows with its uh, Windows uh, Linux subsystem for Windows, strangely um, abbreviated WSL. And um, when that worked, and um, I realized that there's not too much stuff that I need specific applications for because everything is um, web applications nowadays, I gave Linux a try as my desktop machine. Um, at our company, we are running five to six hundred Linux servers, so that's not not an issue. But um, Linux as a desktop, I hadn't tried in quite a while, and um, so I uh, tried uh, Linux again. Realized that I could do everything I needed, especially the stuff I do at work, which is all DevOps stuff and coding and uh, infrastructure management. And then I uh, realized I could even run Final Fantasy XIV, and then I realized I could even run a uh, music production workstation, and that's when I switched to Linux full-time and um, haven't uh, used Windows or um, Mac OS in quite a while now. Anish Omega, you switched to Linux full-time in 2004. Well, you are amazing. No, I, I couldn't get myself to uh, uh, run Linux as a desktop back then. Um, too many things I wanted to have were missing at that time. And also, I didn't want to spend my time configuring uh, uh, files like XF86 config and things like that. Um, and uh, so that's why I, at the, around that time, I switched to macOS. Simply to save time for doing actual work instead of working on my tools. Using my tools to work is was, was uh, my priority. Okay, let's get back to um, our documentation here. Prerequisites, system repositories, system packages, installing Ruby. Um, we probably will need a few things starting with uh, a few basic packages. So let's um, install these. And I'm going to start with the uh, web machine that's over here. Um, just to give you an overview. Um, there should also be a NeoFetch in there, right? Um, no, really? Come on. Everything else is already installed, so that's pretty good. Um, well, let's see what we have here. Um, the web machine is an actual cloud instance where I have uh, four logical cores and eight gigs of RAM. And um, while that seems to seems limited um, this is one of the machines that we are going to scale horizontally so I can always add more of these machines with the same specs Ozone wrote uh, Fedora 37 here that's something that I'd really like to try so I've been an Ubuntu guy since um, Ubuntu 6 and um, we've been running Ubuntu LTS on our hosting platform for 12 years now um, and it's always been good to us. However, um, what I've seen about um, Fedora 37 especially, 
uh, looks quite enticing. So I might actually um, build a development machine using Fedora 37 um, sometime later. So, um, yeah, that's that. Um, let's go ahead and um, install a few more things. So we need node 16. And I'm going to use Slackware, then switch to Debian and never look back. Yeah, Debian has... Uh, I think Debian has gained a little bit of traction in recent years. It was always um, infamous for being the very conservative um, distribution, and that's why many people like me back in the day switched to Ubuntu. Um, but now I even um, consider Ubuntu to be too conservative for my own needs. It's nice to run a server on that. It's very stable and everything, and it's it's uh, uh, perfectly supported. But um, uh, for example, on my desktop machine here, I'm running Manjaro at the moment to get the rolling release upgrades from Arch without the headaches, and that's mostly true. Uh, I do enjoy using Manjaro, even though some packages um, still um, break not by themselves but in terms of interacting with each other because they've been maintained by different people um, and so I ran into a few snags from time to time where package A suddenly didn't work with package B anymore um, but these were all temporary things or uh, issues that I could resolve by installing package A from a different source where I could use a an older or even newer version Edge Omega wrote, um, given I work as a sysadmin, I want things to just run and not deal with stuff. Yeah, exactly. Same here. I also have a PlayStation for gaming if there's a game I couldn't get running on Linux. Um, same here. I um, recently got myself a Steam Deck and and it's basically, well, uh, we I, I got a Wii from, from my brother um, one or two years back. Um, that was all fun, but uh, having a contemporary machine like the Steam Deck is, is just amazing. And yes, um, uh, as a sysadmin, you want to uh, you want things to be boring, and that's mostly true with Debian and even Ubuntu, isn't it? This the Steam Deck is just amazing. I can play um, uh, simple stuff like like Super Tux, for example. A uh, game my my ten year old loves, um, but I can also run things like um, uh, um, Final Fantasy, for example, or um, um, what it's called. Uh, oh dear! What is it called? Uh, let me see. Sometimes things simply escape me. I don't know why. Oh, yeah. Stray. Uh, it was Stray that I was missing. Okay, so now uh, we have configured the node sources. Uh, it did not install node itself, did it? Mm, I don't think so. So let's see. Uh, Node.js. I guess uh, that's going to get installed with this huge apt install command here. I, I would assume. Let me see. Nginx, PostgreSQL. I think we can also strip this down because I'm not going to run Nginx on this machine. I'm not going to run Redis or Postgres on this machine. It's going to be a web node, so that's all it, it's going to do. Um... But let me see. So these are all just uh, repositories. Okay, good stuff. Um, so let me 
install the Postgres repository as well. We might just need the Postgres client here um, because the database will run on its own machine, but uh, we'll see about that. So let's run this. This uh, is looking good. Give to Tesla. Hey, thanks for the feedback. Yeah, um, I do love um, Owncast. I was very surprised how easy it was to set up. And, uh, well, uh, to be honest, I uh, already had uh, everything set up in OBS because I've been running my stream for many years on Twitch before. But um, Owncast quickly decided, quickly convinced me to, to switch to Owncast full-time. So uh, I've basically abandoned Twitch now and... Uh, so that's one less dependency on big IT. All righty, so that's that. Um, maybe I'll... How do I make notes? Um, maybe just open up a new tab. And I'll mm. so um. I've simply opened up a, a note uh, that I have in Obsidian. Uh, thankfully, Obsidian simply works with Markdown files, so I can easily um, open this from uh, a terminal as well. Same here, NH Omega. Um, Twitch never did much for me. Uh, neither in terms of uh, guiding people to my stream, um, nor um, even, uh, let alone uh, um, uh, financially. Uh, I never streamed for, for financial reasons. Um, I do stream f to basically participate in the open source community. That's all I want to do. I benefit so much from the open source co uh, community. Open source uh, runs my business. Open source pays for my shoes. So... Uh, I uh, uh, would like to uh, share and um, uh, give back to the community. And um, while I don't develop open source software, at least at the moment, um, I can always share my experience, which is uh, now um, about 30 years of running um, and uh, leading high performance web projects. And uh, so... Uh, that's my way to give back to the community. Webnode. So uh, let me um, basically strip down this command here. Two things that we are actually going to need on the um, web node. Uh, image magic, uh, Postgres client, XML file, git, yeah, git, we'll need git. Node.js here, uh, Node.js gets installed, okay. Um, then we'll need the build essentials and usual stuff like libreadlines, clib. Um, we don't need nginx and we don't need the... Uh, database thing so let's remove that we won't need certbot either and i'll explain why in a second um and these things uh, are pretty okay so uh, we'll, we'll keep using them <laughs> same here nh omega i i just before I switched to Owncast, I got my first and only payout from years of streaming, and that was uh, about 80 euro or so. Um, so, um, uh, and so when when I uh, actually 
the first step was to to cancel my affiliate uh, status with Twitch, and they of course um, then pointed out that I'm not going to get any um, payouts anymore. And I knew well uh, within these few weeks I probably earned about uh, uh, ten cents or so, so I I won't lose much by dropping my affiliate status. I simply didn't want to uh, people to to um, get new uh, to renew their subscriptions, even though I was about to to leave Twitch. Uh, or at that time at least considering to leave it and um, so that's why I first cancelled my affiliate status and only shortly after I uh, also um, jumped ship. Uh, yes, let's let's not talk about the amounts we've um, put into gear. Sky asked, is all this integration with Activity Poop included out of the box with Owncast. Yes, it is. Owncast is definitely awesome. Go and boost them as much as you can. And it's it's installed in in ten minutes or so. So this this uh, is definitely amazing. Let me see if I can get this into the system clipboard uh, and uh, I'll have to switch here um, let's do an update up to update even though uh, we already did one and yes it copied that's brilliant so let's install this The, uh, yeah, the redecoration of the Twitch page, that's something I still need to do because I still get uh, new followers, follower emails every day and uh, I need to make people aware that I'm not going to pop up on, on Twitch anymore. In terms of own cast, yes, what Gabe just, uh, what uh, Ozone just said. Okay, stuff's installed. Did Yarn get installed as well? I did not notice it up there. Well, we'll, we'll see. I, I'm not familiar with the core pack um, command. Maybe that's going to install it. Um, error performing the request. Let's see, core pack enable. That worked, but yeah, set version classic. That didn't work, and um, I wonder why that is. So yarn must have been installed with Node. Okay. Yeah, makes sense, Energy Omega. I think uh, I'll simply add the yarn repository myself and install it from there. Uh, was it installed as a package? Um. No. That's strange. Where did you come from then? Doesn't get installed with, uh, no, does it? Uh, yes, it does. Oh, that's strange. Okay. Yeah, let's let's install yarn the the usual way um yarn installation here we go mm. you could even just use npm it's even recommended to do this uh, do it this way so let's try this uh, Uh, 
And then some, that's something that needs to go into the notes. Again, everyone, thank you for um, following the stream. Thanks for boosting and uh, welcome to Fullstack Live. Jared, welcome. Good to have you here. Thanks for Bridgetown. I love, 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 love it. Taking its sweet time. Let me take a look at my stream health. That's something that I need to keep in my eye, but uh, yeah, we're doing well. Playback health is at 100%. That's pretty awesome. Uh, oh, I know what's happening. Okay. Ooh, that's that's. Oh, come on. That's a bummer. So, yes, that reminds me of, th of something that I wanted to explain earlier. Um, when I set up these machines earlier, I noticed that um, uh, my uh, provider uh, has started charging for IPv4 addresses. Uh, it's it's only a slight charge, but it reminded me that we are all supposed to switch to IPv6, uh, IPv6, and um, um, so I thought, okay, let's uh, try and build as much as we can using IPv6, and uh, forego using IPv4 addresses. Just a second, um, I got a phone call. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Um, my uh, daughter was calling me because she was locked out of the house and uh, no one else is in here. So, um, time in UTC. Yep, uh, while I, of course, run all uh, servers using UTC just to uh, have a consistent time source, um, uh, the time on my uh, stream scene there is in UTC just simply because I'm based in Ireland and um, during winter time, we uh, are in UTC, uh, which uh, is basically GMT as well. So what I was about to explain was, um, I decided to run as many of these servers using simple and only um, IPv6 addresses because uh, servers between themselves can easily talk IPv6. Of course, uh, outbound um, servers like the load balancer need to have um, IPv4 addresses as well. But unfortunately, apparently, um, the NPM registry um, also only uses IPv4 addresses. And that's why this web machine can't reach um, the uh, YARN repository or the NPM repository in, in the first place. And uh, that's really disappointing. Um, I'll try, of course, to work around that, but uh, we might simply have to have uh, have to add uh, an IPv4 address after all and pay for it. Okay, um, let me see what I can do about this. So, here we are. Host uh, registry npmjs.org. There are IPv6 addresses, though. We 
which we can reach. Mm. So we might have to force this machine to not use IPv4. That's an interesting thing. That's the first time I have to do that. Um, before, we um, sometimes had the issue that we needed to prevent machines from using IPv6 uh, to, to prevent issues, and now I need to do the opposite. This, this is quite interesting. But that's exactly um, uh, why I'm going to try these things. Um, uh, using uh, IPv6 is one of the things. And then there's another thing that I wanted to explain um, uh, which is, uh, I'm not going to use Nginx as it's uh, in the um, Mastodon documentation. Instead, I'm going to use um, the uh, load balancer provided by uh, my cloud provider here. Um, and uh, we'll see how this works. Um, not that I wouldn't be able to uh, configure Nginx and um, uh, uh, Let's encrypt, but um, I was simply curious how uh, using an, a, a load balancer as a service would work, um, which is quite nice because I can um, run this load balancer based on uh, server labels. So all I have to do is label a machine um, with a certain label and it'll be automatically be included in the load balancer. So this kind of service discovery is always nice. and. Um, Yes, I, I'm simply going to try this out. As soon as the load balancer gets too opaque or um, um, it might even get too expensive, I don't think so, but um, it might, um, then I'll always be able to switch back to a to an Nginx setup and uh, point the domain there. Um, so there's nothing that I um, risk here by using um, a off-the-shelf load balancer instead of Nginx. Um, it's simply going to be a nice experiment. So, um, um, well, I might have to use IPv4 though, because, oh uh, dear, that's going to be complicated. Uh, see, um, the load balancer uses a private network, um, to communicate with the web machines, that's this uh, 10 class A uh, network here. But uh, one thing that um, uh, I find strange is that I have an IP address, an IPv4 address here on the ethernet. Um, Uh, interface, even though this machine is not supposed to have any uh, IP address. Maybe that's what's um, what's causing issues here. So let me try and disable this particular IP address. Mm, let's see. How do we do this? Um... um doo -doo -doo -doo. Linux disable um, IPv4 interface. Um, or even. Well, I'm not going to. Yeah, I think that's what I need. Yeah, I can, uh, yes, of course, IP address delete. <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah, the, the answer is obvious here. As soon as you drop the slash 24, everything within that 24 is going to be deleted, regardless of the IP address. Um, but uh, yeah, thanks for reminding me of IP address delete. I don't do this these network level stuff much, so 
IP address delete um, this ETH zero. Uh, no, that's not it. Let's see. Def ETH two. Okay. Okay, now ETH zero is IPv6 only. And should probably also have a correct routing, I hope. Um, let's see. Um, we can still ping the registry. So let's try and use NPM again. This still looks like it's hanging. Crap, I should have tried this earlier. I didn't um, take into account that networking could become a problem during the stream. And uh, this is now blocking us. And I apologize for that. Hmm. Um, does NPM have something like verbose mode or something? Um... Mm hmm Dry run. Hmm. Let's see. Yep. So it loaded a lot of stuff and... I guess now it's going to download stuff and can't. Mm. Brave Wright uh, wrote, you could have a, in, an in-cluster proxy from IPv4 to 6 to keep your pods IPv6 so that you have only one single IPv4. Um, I'm not running this in Kubernetes. Uh, this is um, a mix of bare metal machines and uh, cloud instances. So... Um, they'll all have their own network interfaces and talk to the internet directly. And should be able to. And I it can even ping six the uh, NPM registry, but it's it looks like it can't uh, access it. So that's, um, that's a bummer. Mm, can I still do an apt update, for example? Yeah, that, that works brilliantly. Um... So, I guess, plan B, let's try and uh, install Yarn from um, apt, then. That should still work, because apt apparently does work with... Um, does work with... IPv6. So let's. Uh, well, we, we won't need uh, sudo here because I'm already root. So um, let's see. Mm, apt update. Yep, here's yarn. Apt install yarn. Yep, that does work. And John does work, so yeah. That seems to have solved this issue. So let's go back. Uh, oh yeah, now it's going to be uh, uh, nice. So we need a, a user, and for this user we'll have to install RBN to get a Ruby environment that allows us to install different Ruby versions. And um, and then we can install Ruby. Oh, and they've updated documentation. It now says 304 because um, earlier there was um, uh, they said um, install 303, 
and that was uh, for some reason not correct. And that might have been uh, one of the issues uh, that you run into when you try to install um, Mastodon yourself. Uh, but uh, three or four is the recommended version now. Now here I'll deviate from the um, uh, guide here because um, uh, adding a user Mastodon I mean, really, um, if you install Mastodon, you must run it as the Toot user. So let's do exactly that. Full name, Mastodon. user room number i have no idea work phone home phone other information is correct yes all right now and now we'll switch to this user okay Clone the R oh, okay, it's it's only starting with RBNF. So let's install RBNF here. Make source really? Is that still necessary? Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, we'll do it this way. Okay. Oop, something broke. And again, we can't connect to GitHub now. That's going to be an issue. GitHub must have IPv6 addresses. Are you shitting me? Really? They are working on it? Okay. <sighs> yeah, my ISP doesn't give me IPv6 either, but uh, that's something that I can work with. But 
not being able to connect to such a central service using IPv6. <laughs> That's really strange. Well, okay, I guess I'll have to add a an official IPv4 address to my web server and to future web servers as well. Give me just a minute to do that. Deary me, okay. Can I do that while it's running? Working. Server needs to be switched off while we're doing that. Okay, so uh, yeah, let's do this. Let's uh, shut it down correctly. Mm, yes, of course. Uh... Yep. Yep. Okay, now it stopped. Assign a new IP address. Okay. Uh, did I start it again? No, let's boot it up. Okay, let's see if we're back. Mm. Okay. No, did I copy anything? No. Nope. So we can run this turn. Oh, wait, we're wrong user, wrong user. Um, it actually ran through uh, the installation. Guess we'll have to clean up a little bit especially the bash rc uh it did clone everything makes uh, yeah I, I thought so i was uh, surprised to see the make command um you can remove the configure and make step from your rbn setup yeah that's apparently still um a leftover in the mastodon documentation okay um do we have the um ruby install plugin Let's see, um, where's that stuff? Uh, did it, what was the command? Did it clone Ruby build in RBN plugins? However, that doesn't seem to be a plugins directory, is there? And that's why 
we could actually uh, install RBN using um, using apt. Do we also have Ruby build then as? A... Let me see. Uh, yeah, Ruby build uh, apt cache search. RBN. Yep, yeah, and Ruby build. Okay. Well, if you if you are using a um, an Ubuntu version that's uh, new enough to have these as a package repository, let's not um, uh, manually install that stuff. Rm dash rf dot rbn uh, app install rbn and ruby build. Uh, yeah, we can't use that. Do that here. So apt install rbn ruby build uh let's make sure our bash rc does uh, rbn only once and we don't even need this path extension i guess Yep. So if we do rbn install 304, of course our Ruby build isn't new enough. Okay. Um, try upgrading Ruby build. Yeah, we gotta do that when that's the downside of using apt. I guess I'll keep using rbn, but we'll. Uh, remove our ruby build then and clone that as a plugin so we'll do this and then get up really um we'll do this Uh, let's try it again. RBN install three, three of. Oh, I can't type anymore. Three of four, and here we go. Okay. Let's try and make um, a note of that. Uh, we did install yarn. Install yarn from. Uh, no, we'll, we'll install it from... App, so... Or did we? Yeah, but we added the... Yarn. Uh, let's, let's keep this out, because I guess this probably would have worked uh, had we not, um... Had we not been um, IPv6 only at that time. So I assume that uh, yarn would have worked out of the box. Uh, but um, we'll install rbnf. And then uh, we'll install root install dearie me, install ruby build and what I mean by that is install the latest version of ruby build So this is going to take a minute to install, compile everything.
Yeah, for my own Git stuff, I uh, mostly rely on GitLab. GitLab is a great company. Uh, GitLab is a great service. I do love uh, GitLab CI as a CI system. And uh, so far, I've been pretty happy with it. We are using the hosted version because um, since we have to spend our time running a few hundred Linux servers with uh, a team of uh, a handful of people, um, we are not a big company, um, we are um, decided to get most of the stuff that we need um, in terms of services um, and, and pay for that. Um, but yeah, having your own hosted stuff, like my own uh, own cast here, does have its uh, upsides, definitely. And I love being independent. So uh, that's Ruby done. I guess we could enable that globally, at least for the toot user. And uh, let me see. Uh, okay, so we need... Oh, I should have used um, this option. I did not notice that. So we'll probably have to reinstall that using uh, JE malloc. Okay. Mm, sorry about that. Already exist. Continue with the installation. Yes, please. Yeah, I th uh, the the um, the amount of people using dynamic languages seem to be split uh, between Python and Ruby, as far as I can see. And yeah, I, I started using Ruby about twelve years ago, fell in love with it, and um, it's working great for what I need. So uh, I've always stuck with Ruby, but I can see the appeal of Python as well. Not sure if I myself could get used to it with its own idiosyncrasies, but um, it's definitely a good language to work in. I'm writing less shell scripts since I've got into Ruby, because uh, Ruby is a much more complete programming language, and it does has it does have uh, nice support for um, system level stuff as well. So for yeah, reading files and all these things. Um, and probably also because I was a Perl programmer before I switched to Ruby, um, I do enjoy writing um, the more complex stuff that when, when, when bash syntax gets just too messy, uh, that's what uh, I also use Ruby for. And yes, um, oops, that wasn't what I wasn't what I was uh, uh, aiming for. For everyone who joined uh, recently, let's make this thing interactive and um, don't hold back asking questions or sharing stuff that you'd like to share. Okay, let's read ahead what we are going to do next. Uh, yeah, we. I, I think um, I already did that and that shouldn't be repeated or doesn't need to be repeated. Ooh, yeah, that's something I would like as well. A nice arcade style con uh, uh, joystick or controller with great buttons, really sturdy. Then we'll have to install Bundler. And then we'll get into the hardcore setup. Brilliant. Okay. Okay, we, we are done. I uh, guess uh, just re let's repeat that. And then install Bundler. 
And that's that. Come on. Uh, and exit the toot user. That's that. Now we need to install Postgres, which is going to happen on a different machine. Shock switches. Interesting. Why did you choose uh, low profile switches for for your well yeah the name is a bit of a giveaway isn't it flatbox so it's uh supposed to be low profile in the first place okay yeah far far fighting games where you, where you really hit, need to hit these buttons uh if you want to have something that's that's really sturdy and mechanical Okay, so, um, yeah, um, database, that's going to be our uh, second window here. And uh, this is a bit of a different machine. That's not a cloud instance. Um, that's a bare metal machine with uh, 64 gigs of RAM and 16 um, logical cores. So lots of resources here. It's a Ryzen 7. In case HDOP didn't display that, no, BTOP doesn't uh, display the uh, CPU make, but uh, HDOP apparently doesn't. Okay. So, yeah, mm, I guess. Let's see. Setting up Postgres SQL. PG Tune. Maybe you can install that from apt as well. We need to create a, a user. We'll have to have a password, don't we? Okay, so um, here we we it's it's based on um, Postgres being already installed, so we have to. Um, Uh, modify this or we could always just install all this stuff it doesn't really matter no oh no that's that's just not tidy is it um, let's see how did that do that that's a third level Let's clean this out. Um, I don't think we'll need any of that except libpg dev. Uh, we don't need this nor this nor this. We'll Need. Oh, yep, yeah, we're going to read Redis. Redis is going to run on this machine as well. So, that's that. No cert bot, and no libchain malloc, so we we'll, can, can go here and basically join this here. Well, um, that's another thing that I uh, considered before starting here. Um, obviously, we are not running our hundreds of Linux servers manually. Uh, that would just take too much time and uh, it would result in all kinds of, of, of errors and, and issues. Um, we use Chef for automating all our server infrastructure. And that's what's actually got me into um, uh, Ruby in the first place. Uh, but I decided to not chefify everything here from the get-go because it's just a handful of servers that we need to set up and um, uh, writing infrastructure as code for that would just have taken too much time um, before we got anything running. So I decided to do this manually, um, but that's also because I'm writing down these notes just to 
maybe um, create scripts or things like that um, that will simplify things for us in the future. So let me copy this, which is much less in terms of packages. Yeah, exactly. Um, for the same reason, I'm not uh, coding this uh, Mastodon setup here. Not yet, at least. I am considering um, offering Mastodon hosting as a service. Um, and that's part of this experiment to find out um, how feasible that will be and... Uh, how, uh, what will be necessary to do it. Um, and at that point, we'll definitely do some kind of automation, but um, not for this first setup. Good, so... Oh, I hate when that happens. Um, creating a user, we'll need to create a Postgres user. I guess we already have a Postgres Linux user. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, um, I didn't read that right. Um, here we are entering psql um, with the postgres user that already exists and here they create a user mastodon um, which in my case would be the toot user but since we are not running on the same machine as the mastodon instance um, uh, that's not going to be sufficient we'll we'll have to have a, a password uh, anyway so um, yeah but for the time being i guess Yeah, we'll have to set this up later. And there are already um, additional guides that do that. But uh, let's create this user anyway. So, wait, um, we'll do this. Mm-hmm. minute. I'll have to switch things around here. Can I untile these? Yes. Okay. So that's that. Uh, yeah, ozone is uh, uh, very correct in, in saying it'd be nice to uh, to post links though no recipes uh, to, to recipes and playbooks problem uh, is that a lot of the docs are uh, getting outdated very quickly yeah, that's that's what I uh, noticed myself too and uh, master host seems to have made a good business out of hosting private master instances definitely seems to be a market there yes the, uh, I agree um, but uh, master host also seems to be a single uh, person running everything and they are pretty much swamped over there um, so having a team of um, people who are al already um, familiar with running um, managed hosting uh, at scale uh, is definitely something that I'm looking into Gabe was actually hoping someone would do an own cast service so people could easily get their own spun up quickly as well. Yeah, and um, uh, that's uh, something that I'm considering as well. Why um, limit ourselves to Mastodon? Um, we could always uh, uh, offer all the um, 
uh, common services like uh, PixelFed and uh, PeerTube as well. Main issue with a lot, a lot of docs online is use Docker, says NH Omega. Docker has its use, but not to deploy every little thing under the sun. Um, it depends, um, but um, at least um, the um, approach by using Docker commands or even Docker Compose is more uh, geared towards a development environment. I don't think I'll run anything in production using Docker Compose. Um, uh, I guess if you want to run Docker uh, images professionally, you will have to switch to something more sophisticated like Kubernetes or Nomad. And uh, then you'll be um, at a different level of operations as well, because now you have to, have to run or um, lease your own Kubernetes cluster and things like that. And things get very complicated quite quickly. Um, so yeah, um, Docker is interesting for development level stuff or to run things at scale at at big scale uh, using something like kts but um uh i don't consider docker or docker compose a production level tool but yes oldcast install and config was probably the easiest thing i've ever installed and got up and running literally it's freaking breeze yeah that's that's go for you um Go applications are a dream to set up. And uh, Oncast is built quite nicely, so yeah, uh, they did a great job over there. Okay, let me um, finish the Postgres setup here. We'll have to create our a Toot user, so... Uh, or am I going to use Mastodon? I'm going to use Master1, actually. Um, so create user Master1, create DB. Create user master one, create db backslash q. There's even the site.js way to deploy it as well, claim to be even easier. I haven't noticed that, and I'm not familiar with site.js. Uh, I don't even know what that means. Uh, well, I can always guess that it's a JavaScript-based deployment tool, but uh, I've never seen it before. Good, 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 good. That's that. And now we're going to go back to set up Mastodon itself. Which means I'm going to... clone Mastodon, am I? Yeah, I think I do. I'd like to have the additional option of of making changes and and uh, maintaining my own fork, especially for for quick fixes or things like that. So um, yeah, let me quickly create the repository. Uh, uh, let's uh, do that. Here, mm. and I'm going to do this off screen because I have to set up a few things and, and log in and stuff. Okay, so give me just a minute. Since I'm going to run this from GitLab, I'll have to create a blank project first. And then I'm going to have to clone it to my workstation and push it up from there. Interesting project, one the website up and running fast, uh, Codeberg Site.js app. Okay, I'll have a look uh, at that later. Mm, okay, so let's do Mastodon. And mm. no, 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 I need to. 
create a of a member of this as well. I'm already a member because I created this group, of course. Which means um, we should be good to go. Okay, so... Let me... Create a terminal here. on here This works. Uh, remote rename. Okay, it's not. And then get remote. And origin. Okay, which now enables me to go back to our web server. And it's on Mastodon, as described in the documentation. We'll clone this into live. And then...
We'll check out the latest version, apparently. Okay. So, let me do this. Um, as the toot user. Git clone. HTTPS. Uh, GitLab.com. Lots of installation. First bundle. Let's do this separately. I'm still bummed that we needed to use an IPv4 address, but yeah. Looks like IPv6 is still too new. Maybe it'll have widespread use after two decades. So to everyone who um, joined us recently, hello, I'm Jochen, I'm uh, a greybeard system administrator. I've been using Linux since uh, 1993. For 12 years now, um, I've been running my own managed hosting company. And today I'm going to install my first Mustardin instance already in a scalable way. So it's not going to be a single VM or something like that. Um, it's already going to be um, with dedicated machines for databases and uh, for web nodes and with a proper load balancer in front and things like that uh, just to see um, how to do these things um, I'm simply curious uh, not that I would need that for my own instance but I'll open it up as well and um, yeah I'd like to see it grow and uh, I always love these community things back in the 90s I ran my own BBS um, from my uh, bedroom and um, so I guess uh, it's just simply in my blood to do these things um, and uh, I hope I'm going to enjoy it. Now, um, so let's see. Ozone Road, yeah, I run a Hetzner VPS and I wanted to use IPv6, but, but my ISP doesn't support it, so I couldn't access my own VPS. Um, all this stuff is running at Hetzner 2. However, I was willing to use a jump host, so I spun up a little cloud server, um, the smallest instance that I could get from, from Hetzner, um, with an IPv4 address and an IPv6 address. And um, I'm actually logged into this machine. That's jump one here. Um, uh, but uh, apparently that's not enough. Uh, being able to, to log in via a jump host isn't enough because even services like GitHub don't yet support IPv6 and that's just pity. So, uh, let's continue. Now, we have uh, cloned 
Mastodon installed all the gems. Now let's install the root, uh, the JavaScript stuff. Let me see. Sidekick, unique jobs. Yeah, middle is no longer done. I guess uh, I leave that to Mastodon. And the guide. Oh, that's what you meant, Seb. Uh, IPv6 was introduced in 1995, so it has already been almost a two decades. We are running up to two decades. <coughs> okay. Also uh, asked, the problem with using a jump host, though, is if my VPS doesn't have uh, IPv6, with help. <coughs> oh, sorry. Okay, I'm drying up. If my uh, uh, doesn't VPS doesn't have IPv6, can I actually test the web front end through a normal web browser? Yeah, um, that's something that I wanted to uh, mitigate by running almost everything using IPv6. So all the internal communication was supposed to run through IPv6. And only the um, um, edge host running nginx in this case, or the load balancer that I'm going to use, um, were supposed to run IPv4 and 6, so they'd be reachable from wherever. Um, but um, yeah, uh, it wasn't supposed to be. Yeah, in, in the late 90s, early noughties, the, where they said we're running out of IPv6, uh, IPv4 addresses and we'd have to convert, and yet here we are. Yeah, but that's um, definitely the cause why uh, providers are now charging for IPv4 addresses. Um, not that uh, it would matter in, in the grand financial uh, picture, but um, uh, I would love to... Uh, do a pure setup uh, in the sense of IPv6 wherever possible, but it's just not uh, possible uh, in in uh, some uh, essential places. Is your JB using v6 only? What do you mean JB? So yarn is done. Oh, the jump box does have uh, v4 and v6 so i can log in from uh, home here with ipv4 but from there i can actually connect to machines that only have ipv6 um but uh yeah it's a pity that it isn't possible okay um what now? Generating a configuration. So... We'll have to set up Postgres, the Postgres user first, though. Mm, I remember there being another document about uh, performance tuning and I think they described there how to set up the uh, Postgres user mm. I think that's in scaling up your server isn't it uh, transaction pool yes uh, we'll have to install PG bouncer as well Ah, uh, yes, and in this context, I think they actually um, added a password to the Mastodon user. So it's alter user with password, and then password, okay. So I'll have to do that in private. Um, alter user with a password something, okay. Okay. 
Oh, you mean setting up my own proxy so I could actually use IPv6 point all hosts that um, have difficulties reaching stuff via IPv6 uh, to this proxy and uh, use that. That's actually a good suggestion. It's a bit of a detour for now and I'll um, I, I, I'll consider that doing that later. Um, but yeah, I, I see what you mean and it does make sense. I mean, if, if I'm willing to install a um, jump host to get around uh, IPv6 issues, I can also uh, use this jump host as my proxy to get around other issues. Um, that's that's a, a valid suggestion. Yeah, thank you for that. Okay. Um, I might do that, for example, before I add more web hosts or something like that, and, and we'll see if, if that's possible. Okay, um, password. Okay, give me just a second. So I'll have to create a password first. That's uh, from server. Yeah. to do that on the database machine. Auto user master one with password secret. Oh wait. Mm. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it's yeah. Of course, it's another point of failure, but uh, a point of failure that is—it's <laughs> hard to say temporary. But uh, yeah, you know what I mean. It's it's a workaround um, until IPv6 is supported more widely, and then we can get rid of it. It's not technical debt per se, but it's it's not our technical debt at least. Um, that's database done. That means we can actually go ahead and uh, set up uh, Mastodon, huh? Oh, uh, we'll have to have uh, PG Bouncer. Uh, where do I get PG Bouncer, though? Or do we... Let's run it without PG Bouncer for the first... Well, it, we won't run into load issues early. Another 50 years? Well, then it's uh, someone else's... It's going to be someone else's problem. Um... Why did this scroll off? Um, here. This is going to be the coup de gras. Okay. Okay, domain name is going to be 
uh, geekdom.social. Single user mode? No! I want to invite all my friends. Are you using Docker to run Mastodon? Of course not. PostgreSQL host. That's uh, DB1. Oh, we'll have to... Oh, mm. I'll have to uh, create a failover IP address first. Let me do this. Um, Ozone asked, um, so this rake command thing, can someone explain this? I have zero clue what this is or how to use it. Okay, so that's, that's uh, I, I, I'm happy to explain that. Um, rake is basically a short um, abbreviation for Ruby make. So if you are familiar with uh, the make command that usually does some um, build automation, um, it was it's, uh, was started uh, as a, a tool to compile um, C pro uh, projects, uh, so projects written in C, and uh, from, from there on um, it was used for all kinds of things. Um, and uh, Ruby introduced its own um, automation tool, basically, which is uh, like Make. For example, you can define dependencies in there. Um, uh, and uh, But instead of the arcane Make file syntax, it's Ruby code. Um, and so you define these uh, rake jobs um, that then automate stuff like um, uh, yeah, we, you can do everything from there because from this uh, Ruby code you can even um, spawn um, uh, shell commands so uh, you can uh, definitely do anything from there and um, uh, as is good practice Mastodon uses Rake itself to automate um, things like for example doing the initial setup that's what Rake does, and I really love Rake. Um, that's, for example, one of the ways you can replace bash scripts if they are getting too complex, if you have too many conditionals in there. Uh, loops are also quite kludgy um, in, in bash syntax. And um, simply by defining a few Rake tasks in a Rake file, um, uh, you can uh, use the much nicer Ruby syntax to... Uh, automate your stuff so um, I'll have to quickly go and um, uh, define a uh, failover IP address give me just a second that's something that I um, did forget no I did not but I didn't create one for the Okay, we, we uh, okay. Uh, give me just a moment. Uh, we can delete this one. I created one for the Nginx host, but then I decided to use a load balancer. Um, so we don't need the floating IP for the Nginx host, but we need a floating IP for the database, and I'll have to create that somewhere else. Okay, just, just a second. I'm going to do that uh, off screen because it's that way I don't run the risk of exposing anything sensitive. Mm. Oh dear, okay, I haven't named this server, so it's going to be harder to find. Are you it? Oh, I can always check the IP address. Uh, mm, yes, that's it. failover IP
Hopefully it'll be provisioned soon. Configure it on the database host as well. Uh, I'll do that later. I'll simply use the, the local host name. This is just taking too long. So we're going to use db1a. And I'll be able to change that to db1 later. Port name of the Postgres database is going to be buster1. Name of the user is also going to be master1. Password, well, I'm not going to re reveal that. Uh, just a second. Here we go. Uh, where's the password here? Database connection could not be established with this configuration. Try again. Okay, and now it's trying to use, um, no, it's trying both IPv6 and v4, and it fails both times. Uh, there's no database. Do I have to create the database myself? Thankfully, it didn't display the, the password here, so, um, that's strange. We did create a user. Oh, it created the user master one and create DB. Does that create a database with the same name? I thought it was a kind of a um, a permission, a grant, but it could as well mean that we now have a, a database master one, and that's that actually makes sense. Uh, what did I? Yeah, I said database master one. Okay. And it says connection could not be established. Mm, that might have a different cause. Hey, Moo, how are you? I hope you're feeling better. Chat, meet Moo, my colleague. Who's a little under the weather at the moment? So, um... Database does work, doesn't it? Yeah. Now, I have no... experience with uh, running Postgres, so... Okay. I'll do my best to distract you. Um, Postgres show databases. Postgres tutorial, yeah, looks like it. Simply backslash L, yeah, the Postgres has this strange non-SQL syntax time to time. All right, backslash L then. So it did not create any database. And maybe it's by default only reachable from uh, localhost? 
Yeah, the, the Mastodon documentation probably uh, assumes that we are running everything on the same host, so um, localhost is viable. But not in our case, so... Mm. Postgres, listen... Yeah, that's exactly what I'm asking. That's in HBA. Okay. I thought so. I, I have faint memories from uh, configuring Postgres in the past, but uh, I've only done it once or twice, so I'm not a Postgres DBA by any stretch of the imagination. Oh, thanks, NH Omega. That's both the listen address and PGHBA to permit logins. Okay. So uh, it's, uh, I guess it's Postgres conf and, uh, yeah, Postgres SQL conf. Postgres SQL conf, there's something, listen, listen addresses. Uh, and we'll use asterisk. Okay. Max connections 100, let's set this to 200 and it'll probably even be able to serve more but 200 is okay and by by the time we have this many connections we are going to use pg bouncer anyway and then uh we'll need pg hba where oh dear okay so local po all postgres and then local all all i see What's the syntax to grant master one host is a TCP IP socket. Okay. So I guess so and, and then uh, it's first field connection type, that's host. Database is not going to be all, that's going to be master one. User is going to be master one. And then the address, that's going to be anything. And method. Hmm. No idea, if even necessary. So. We'll add that. Production databases, host, master one, that's the database, master one, that's the user. Uh, zero, 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 and method, peer? MD5. Okay. Select PG reload conf. That's oh, that's a function, and that re reloads configuration. That's a nice touch. Okay, so that's uh, I guess scram. Shard 256 makes sense. Scram Shard 256. Oh, wait, peer is as the user. So, do I have this right? Oh, well, 
let's maybe let's read a little bit. Reading does educate, I have heard. Uh, well, MD5 or Scrum SHA-256 are preferred since they send encrypted passwords. Yeah, yeah, of course. I guess that should do the trick. So let's get another shell here. Let's do the select. T means true, does it? At least I didn't get any errors. Okay. Um, now, try again. Postgres host, db1a dot... Uh, it. Yes. Master one. Master one. Password. Still could not establish a connection. Okay. Hmm. Well, we are here for all these. Two thing issues. Um Here they say host, all, all. Okay, I did not do the slash zero. Maybe that's it. Let's uh, try the slash zero here. Of course, yeah. Yeah, of course. I guess uh, that could be the cause. Uh, do I get this back? Oh, awesome. Okay. So let me try logging in another time try again yes I think I might have failed there. <sighs> Still doesn't work. Maybe I'll try locally first. Piece, piece of call allow me to yeah it does well we don't have a database yet but dash h host name is definitely going to be interesting and then i guess that's going to be a dash capital u username okay 
and then I can specify a password, but uh, I'm not going to do that. Oh, I can force PC to prompt for a password. Okay. Oh, it'll prompt anyway if it's necessary. Okay. So let's do that. Um, I'm aware that I'm still invisibly typing. Hey, Moo, see you tomorrow. Get better soon. Get some rest. Uh, so that's uh, dash H localist. I'm aware that you can't see what I'm typing, but I'll narrate that. Um, and dash U master one. Let's see how this works. Now it asks me for a password. Let's make sure I copy the right password. And that's that. Okay. Database master one does not exist. So once I... Um... Oh, interesting. So once I name a user, it'll also require a database of the same name. Okay, so... Um... We don't have any databases yet. No, there's only Postgres and the templates. Okay. Guess I have to create a database then. Let's find out how. Create database with owner. Does the documentation help there in any way? This you must have done. Okay, that's the database name, right? Must have done production here. Yeah. I think that's missing from the documentation somehow. Not sure why. Might be the install script does the db creation, but it can't. Apparently, it can't connect. And I, and from uh, the say this here, it says connection failed. Database master one does not exist, even though I have not explicitly stated a database name, just the username. Um, so. Apparently, it uh, rejects me because there is no database to this user. But we can probably try and create one. Well, I'd rely on the on the error message here, where it doesn't say can't connect because the, the port's uh, connection refused or something. Um, it says database master one that does, does not exist. And so I assume it already talked to the database, but uh, couldn't log in completely because there is no database named after this user. That's how I would interpret this. 
Uh, let's try and create one. Um, how complex is um, this command here? Oh. I have no idea how complex this is going to be. Oh, is is. Maybe someone else had the same issue. Mastodon uh, create database. It says set up a user and database for Mastodon. Uh, create user, Mastodon, create DB, semicolon. Did I not enter the create DB for some reason? Let's see. Um, I guess we can delete a user, can't we? Drop user? How do we delete a user? Um, Postgres delete user. Drop user. It's uh, ooh, okay. Drop role master one. Okay. Or we simply use the drop user command. Interesting. Drop user so one dash e. Oh, okay. So there's actually a drop user, and that then um, uh, that's something like a macro that then uh, does the drop role. Okay, so it's drop user dash e. Okay. Drop user master one dashi. Semicolon. Nope. But that didn't work. Mm. Oh, drop user is a is a command line command. Okay, okay. Uh yes, I see. So it's actually Drop user master one dash e. Okay. Uh, now we're going there as well. Uh, two and do a create user master one create db semicolon. It does create a role, it does not create a database. Does not create a database though. So I already did that. Maybe it's just the way I call this that it will. Um, so if I do this, then it'll automatically try and access a database. Uh, named after the user because I haven't specified a database. Can I connect without connecting to a database just to see if my password and so on is, is all right? Um, Postgres connect without database. Yes, how do I connect to Postgres SQL? Uh, yeah, they get the same... Uh-huh, that's the same issue. You have to connect to a database. Uh, we could use template one or Postgres. It's wise to create a new user in the database with the same name and use those. Okay. 
and the maintenance database is Postgres, so I guess we'll simply use Postgres, if that's possible. Uh, they'll ask me for the password, just a second. And now it says password authentication failed. Connection to server at localhost failed. Password authentication failed for user master one. In dev setup, there's mention of you can now create databases right after a create user statement. Let me see. Um, uh, interesting. So that's not in the install guide, but in the development guide. Uh, let me see. Where is this? Contributing, setting up a dev environment. So that's the create user dash dash create db. You can now create the databases, must on development and must on test. Load the schema and then create cdata by running Rails db setup. Okay, so I guess uh, the issue I'm having is that uh, for some reason the password isn't in there. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'll do one more alter user master one with password some password it says alter role now I log out and uh, maybe the reload configuration didn't quite work so we'll do a restart of the database system control restart Postgres. Okay. Let's try again. Password should still be in there. And now I can log in. Okay. So let's try setting up the database credentials again. Try again. Postgres host. So at the end, I think I should have just um, restarted the database server in the first place. Port name is master1. One. Master1 one. password. Oh, it still says. But now it says no pghba conf entry for... Oh, I'm connecting via IPv6 now. And that, of course, doesn't work either. So, okay. Wow, that's that's really... Mm, I guess I can... Uh, wait, let me clear the screen here. So you can watch again. Um... <clears throat> Additionally to IPv6, we of course need to have uh, to have v. Uh, to, uh, in addition to v4, we have v6 support as well. And just to make sure we are all right, we, let's. Uh, Yeah, I think the reload function that I called earlier might have worked for the user account, but um, <coughs> I would bet that the changes in pghba.conf require a restart. Because that's um, something stuff that needs to be initialized when the database spins up and requires a full re 
initialization of the whole service. So that's that. And we'll try this again. So I'll have to lock you out again. Please bear with me. Try again. Yes. Port. Database. User. Password. Let's copy that again, just to be sure. Okay. Um, still says no PGHBA conf entry. Oh, I hate this. Okay. Oh, that's a localhost address. That's not the IPv6 for everything. Um, let's see. Uh, what's the actual IPv6 catch-all address? It's the FE something, isn't it? Uh, Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, it's just two colons. Okay. Docs confirm HPA requires a reload. PostgreSQL conf actually has documentation in the comments as to what settings require a restart. Mm -hmm. I, I could have done a reload as well. I... I I immediately went the went the hard way and did a restart. Okay, um, so let's do the double colon to get uh, the actual any address thingy. Uh, so let's all write this with spaces. This time, well, no, I'm not taking any chances anymore. Restart it. Uh, yeah, and I'm, I'll try another connection right away. Yes. I am getting tired, I'll be honest. It's already late in the afternoon here. So I'm afraid of making mistakes now. But I hope we'll get to at least getting the database set up and the Mastodon set up running. Another password copy. <laughs> now it says connection refused. Uh, why? Doesn't the database run anymore? Does say active. to connect no so I guess I've watched something now
Oh, I forgot the subnet mask again, I guess. <sighs> I hate it. Let's try locally first. And if that works, we'll try the web host. Yeah, locally works again. Web host, try again. says no PGHBA conf entry. Oh, for the database Postgres, of course. Why Postgres? Huh? Oh, of course. Oh, uh, look at that. And, yeah, look at that. It tries to connect as master1, but there is no master1 database yet, even though I have uh, named it here, because it first needs to connect, as I did in my test, to connect to the Postgres database, um, to create the master1 uh, database. Uh, and thanks to the create db attribute, it is allowed to do that. Um, so I have to allow Postgres too, um, and um, yeah, that makes sense. And I'm not going to use any wildcards or anything. I'll just add the the uh, Postgres database to the HBA thingy. Um, so let me see. So what we need to do is. That's master. Yeah, so, uh, now that I think it through and now that I've seen the error message properly, um, it does make sense. Just as I had to um, explicitly name Postgres as the database to connect to because there's no other option except the template databases, I guess. Um, I'll definitely have to allow that as well. So, um, wait, um, uh, as here, it's local all Postgres peer, and I guess we'll do something like post all Postgres, yeah, I guess all all users that's a user isn't it i'm still not familiar with the syntax it's a, first is host uh, or um yeah first field connection type that's going to be host and we need the same for host ssl actually even though no we haven't set up any uh, ssl yet so that's uh, not necessary at this point <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, then we'll have database all. No, that's database Postgres. User all? Well, I guess. Post DB user address. Okay. I am Okay, so Postgres up there is the Postgres user. The Postgres user has access to all databases. That makes sense. But 
database postgres that's okay for master one either ipv4 or v6 and then of course later the master one database as well so that's that well we definitely are learning something here let's restart another time And again, I'll have to put a feel over that. Just a second. Okay, so try again. Yes, host. Port database. User, password, give me the password, database configuration works. Redis host, that's also going to be maybe one A. port redis password we'd have to create a redis user and a redis database i haven't done either of that yet so yeah let me quickly create a password mm. actually i'll have to find out if I can use a single Redis instance for more than one Mastodon uh, instance, but we'll see about that. Uh, let's do... Uh, what would I like to add? Well, I guess it's a uh, server. I'll create a new password for that. Okay. Let me grab that password. Redis connection could not be established. Yeah, it could not. Of course it could not, because the Redis database doesn't exist yet. So we'll have to do that too. And good thing I uh, covered my, my desktop, but because this time it pasted the Redis password in visible text, um, which means I can't reveal this screen anymore. Okay. Mm but we can always switch over here and set up Redis. Uh, I guess up to install Redis. And we'll need a password for Redis. Redis set password. And as far as I know, um, this Redis password is for the whole service, so there is, that's uh, independent of uh, database and documents and things like that. Let's use the first Stack Overflow answer here. In Redis conf require pass and then the password in clear text, okay. Okay. Uh, wait.
So I'll have you have to lock you out again just to enter the password. I guess I'll have to disable protected mode. No, not necessarily. Let's keep it on for the time being. Okay, there's ACL rules there. Okay, interesting. Something like this. Uh, let me see. Only asked me for a Redis password, so that's not a specific user. Starting with Redis 6, require pass is just a compatibility layer on top of the new ACL system. The option effect will be just setting the password for the default user. Clients will still authenticate using auth, if, as usually, or more explicitly with auth default, if they follow the new protocol, both will work. Okay, so let's try this. Require pass. Secret. Oh, that's not my new password, though. Let's grab the new one. Mm, that is... That's better. System control, Redis, restart. No, restart Redis. Yeah, I'm getting tired, as I said. Status versus Redis. It's active, but it's bound only to localhost. So, good that I saw that. Where do we bind? Um, I guess... Binding to all the interfaces is dangerous and will expose the instance to everybody on the internet. Yeah, that's... No, that's actually not the case because we can uh, try to bind our... Oh, we'll have to try and get a private network for that. At least to just one or multiple selected interfaces. Okay, let's try that. So we'll bind to that and we'll bind to that. Now it's failed. Mm. has failed. Hmm. 
Mm -hmm. The IPv6 bind didn't work. Try again. Redis host. Port. Let's grab the password again. Redis configuration works. Do you want to store uploaded files on the cloud? Oh, I didn't think of that. Well, we could store them locally for the time being and switch to cloud storage later. I actually wanted to um, set up my own Minio cluster as well. But we're not going to do that today. Uh, not uh, because uh, I'll have to go to dinner soon and um, I'm actually pretty tired now after concentrating for about... Yeah, three hours or so. Um, but so let's answer this with no for the time being, and we'll move that stuff to the cloud later. Do you want to send emails from localhost? That's another question I'll have to delay. Mm. No, I don't. I'll have to set up an email server, though, for this particular... ...service. Okay. Things are getting complex now. Um, uh, I haven't... There are things that I haven't prepared yet. And I guess I'll have to do that for... To be able to continue here but it's getting late and um, yeah so this has actually been a lot of fun um, and I've learned quite a few things I'll have to write down a few notes so I don't forget about them with the uh, Postgres setup and things what do you think? Shall we continue this? Um, say, tomorrow or day after, Thursday. Um, usually my, my streams are scheduled for uh, Tuesday afternoons and Thursday afternoons. I might not want to wait until the day after tomorrow, though. So I might be back tomorrow and um, we'll continue from there. Um, so if you like, please follow uh, this stream. You can follow from your own uh, Mastodon account and uh, get a notification when I go online. You can also follow my uh, Mastodon account, which is still gvis at mastodon.social. Maybe not, probably not for very much longer. And um, yeah, uh, I'd love to see you around. Uh, let me see. Did we have any issues during the stream? Oh, yeah. There was actually some... Well, we are, at the moment, we are not very healthy. 
Only two thirds healthy. What's the issue? Low bandwidth viewers. Okay. There's an issue with my setup, I guess. So I'll need to check my own cast setup. I think I've, I have to set up a lower bitrate. Okay. I, apologies for this. These are still early issues. And I make sure to add things. And it also says CPU usage on my server is over 90%. So... We might actually have to upgrade to a different server. All right, so, um, anyway. I can't yet tell if I'm going to be online tomorrow. That depends on, on the work I have to do and um, if I can make it. But uh, simply follow the stream and we'll see. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for dropping by even if you've just lurked lurking is perfectly okay and um, for everyone who popped into chat and said hello or even tried to help thank you very much I really really appreciate it and um, yeah I'll see you later this week and we'll get this cluster running I promise until then take care <laughs> Good.